Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 275, featuring a review of the game Lords of Shulama. Now this is a game that just came out. It was uh, developed by a, a Spanish company named Numantian Games. And it's one of those good old classic party-based, turn-based uh, role-playing games that you and I like so much. Anyway, there's a lot of great stuff in this game and we've got a lot to cover. So, without further ado, here is Lords of Shulama. And here we go, folks, with a little game called Lords of Shulama. Actually, it's not a little game. It's pretty big. Something like 40 hours into it, and I don't even think I'm maybe three-quarters of the way through. So, yeah, as you can see here, the first choice is the difficulty level. <laughs> and they try to taunt you a little bit into this old-school veteran mode, but uh, it's pretty tough. You might want to go with normal. I don't even want to think about hardcore. But uh, I'll have more to say after the little cutscene here. So deep was I sleeping that I felt as if I were drowning in the darkness and silence, as if time itself had stopped. I was on the Isle of Brina, far from the great war that consumed the grand continent of Rodinia. I heard a voice whispering in my ears, and I felt as if my body was being lifted up. I could not open my eyes, but I could see the firmament clearly, as if I had been pulled up to the stars. Gowlin, hear the voice of Golot, the architect, the master of dreams and constructor of matter. The world is in agony. The guardian of souls is gaining power over the lords of Shulim. Our strength diminishes. I have watched you from the stars. I have chosen you to be my herald, my hand on earth. You must complete the mission I am giving you. Eradicate the evil that profanes the divine temples of the Creators. Gather your party and sail to Shulima, where no other men from the West have set foot. Let the currents of Naliet and the breath of Taliet guide you to your destiny. The voice trailed into the stars like a whisper carried away on the winds. Finally, I was able to open my eyes. Had it all been a dream? I wished it were so, but I knew it was real. And that is the superb voice work of one Joseph Ghani. I think that's how you pronounce his name. <laughs> Ghani? Ghani? <laughs> Definitely not gonorrhea. Uh, but uh, really good voice acting, good writing. And, you know, that was. Uh, some people might look at that and say, oh, look how cheap that intro movie was. I mean, <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition knocks it out of the ballpark. Yeah, maybe, but, uh, you know, do you really want to lavish cutscenes and lavish intros, or are you more concerned about gameplay? If you're more concerned about gameplay, you're in the right place here, my friend. Now, you could look at the quick party. I don't recommend ever choosing a preformed party. I mean, half the fun is creating your own guys, and it's okay to mess up. Now, I've seen some some criticism about this game. People got, they put together bad parties and they couldn't get very far. They had to restart. But that's just kind of par for the course for these old school games like this. It's okay to, to fail. <laughs> it's just a game, folks. Okay, so first we just uh, pick our class. I'll say more about those in a second. And then we get to pick the uh, god the characters pray to. There's quite a bit of religion in this game. They have a fairly sophisticated... Uh, theology, I guess, for the game. Not really surprising, considering that the uh, director and the lead designer was Jesus. I'm just kidding. Uh, Jesus, Arrib Jesus Haribas. Oh, I think I got that little rolled R in there. That is your <laughs> American high school foreign language classes at work. But this is a... Uh, I was really intrigued by the studio. Now, you probably would never know it playing this, but the developer, Numantian, is based in Spain. It's a local, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, an independent game studio there. Apparently have uh, employees from different different areas, different languages, but 
Uh, they've really done a bang up job on this. Uh, they funded it with at least partially through Kickstarter back in uh, 2013. Uh, they asked for 10k and they ended up with uh, I think 36. Uh, 35.6k, so <laughs> almost over three times what they asked for. A lot of excitement about this this game, and for and for good reason. Okay, so you've got uh, I think six characters, so you might want to think about party balance. And and like the old wizardry games and Bard's Tale games, you need to be thinking in terms of uh, front row characters and back row characters. So you can't have uh, everybody armed with a sword or a dagger, for example. So, you want to have some uh, guys in the back row with pole arms or ranged weapons. So I, you know, the first playthrough of this, I uh, did not have a thief in the party, and, or a divine summoner. And I really think that the thief is a nice addition because there's quite a few traps, there's quite a few uh, locks to pick, and uh, your main character can do all that stuff, but. You'll be spreading him pretty thinly if you have him try to, do, you know, to do all that in addition to his other really cool skills. So I don't. I think this is one game where the thief might actually be a, a nice addition. Another almost mandatory character is a bard. I mean, for, bards are so cool. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have one anyway. But it's especially important in this game because these opening battles it doesn't take very long before they get really tough and you'll just get wiped. Unless you have the bard in the party, that is. Pretty early on, she'll get a song of stunning. I believe it's a two live cruise song. And that will actually immobilize at least one, maybe uh, several enemies, maybe all of them. Give you a chance to attack a few, get them down, and survive the battle. So definitely add the bard. It was said that it was to be the darkest and bloodiest age in the history of man. On the great continent of Rodinia, the two largest kingdoms began a great war that would drag every country and village into an endless stretch of death and chaos. Many begged and prayed to the gods for help, but the gods never answered. In the safety of Brina, a small island in the far east of Rodinia, the echoes of war thundered louder with each passing day. In those ill-fated times, those who govern our destiny decided that I, Gowlin the explorer and navigator, would do my part to shape history. So I was chosen by Golot, the master of works, to be his herald on Earth. In that time, I understood very little of the true meaning of those grave and profound words. The gods who once lived on the lost continent of Shulima years ago were engaged in battle with the Guardian of Souls, and as their power waned, the power of their enemies waxed. Golot commanded me to sail to Shulima, and once there, liberate the sacred temples of the Divine. Little hope remained in the world, as long as our Lord Protectors continued their battles beyond the distant stars. Without them, nothing could stop the ruin of Rodinia. And so, it was then that I gathered my allies and set sail from Brina to the east. The wind and the currents guided us across the vast ocean of Morovia. The clouds and the mists were our constant and only companions. Two weeks later, the clouds divided, and at last we felt the light of the sun once more. And there it was. Beyond the horizon, the land of legend. Shulima, home of the creators. I mean, I think these guys have probably done as as good, if not better, of a job with that those sort of expositions as I've seen in a game, especially without the elaborate cutscenes and everything. I mean, they got a really nice voice actor. Uh, the text is, you know, the writing is good. But the, what I really like is the the music. This is a composer named Nicolas Nicolas de Ferron. Ferron, <laughs> something like that. Really love his music. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous soundtrack. All the way through. It's probably one of my favorite aspects of the game. Okay, so I'm just taking a look here at my characters. You don't really have to be a rocket scientist to figure out how to control this game. <laughs> the interface is fairly straightforward. 
Uh, you could play with WASD keys on the keyboard, or you can just uh, click where you want to go and hold the mouse button down. Now, control with the mouse is what I like the best. I really don't understand you guys that prefer controllers or uh, the WASD stuff. I mean, how, where, how do you hold your beer and control the game at the same time if you're using a controller? Just, uh, I don't get it. Now, you saw me tweaking my combat formation back there. Now, that's really important for the Paladin and the Bard, because they have, uh, actually, I think maybe just, the, yeah, I'm pretty sure they both have these uh, aura kind of effects. And if they're not in the middle, if you put them off to one side, then some of your characters won't receive the, the benefits. So it's good to put those in the middle. I don't think it really matters that much for the rest. Of course, uh, you know, keeping in mind that characters in the back will have to have reach weapons or ranged weapons. Now at the beginning, we're kind of just running around this place, exploring, picking up these, these herbs. And the herbs are very, very useful. As you can see, they have all kinds of different effects. You have to collect uh, quite a few of them, though, before you can use them. And uh, only this Golan character has the skill, Knowledge of Herbs. And uh, you can level that up later. It gets even better. Instead of just getting one herb, he might get two or three, you know, however much you want to invest in it. He's also the only character with his Camouflage skill, which that'll get you out of uh, random encounters. And uh, in this game, that can be a matter of life and death. You know, if you're off somewhere, you're out of food, you're trying desperately to get back to town, then you hit this really awful random encounter. Man, you'll be happy to, that you leveled up that camouflage skill. Yeah, they do a good job, too, with this game. Right away, you know, you're trying to get into this village. You obviously need to go there. And you have to deal with this jerk of a guard, a soldier of Ningorth. You know, they want you to pay 100 gold just to come and go. And that's a, that's very limited. Like, you can, uh, if you go away and come back, you have to pay that 100 gold again. And you're not nearly strong enough to take them on yet, so... I mean, for me, that worked really well, because I got really pissed off at that bastard. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you take my gold now, but uh, I'll be back with an axe. He's collecting herbs. You might, like, I got 70 gold. I got to try to find 30 just to get just to get in there. I don't think I can sell these herbs, but, uh, oh, there we go. See a little goblin encampment there. Yeah, enemies! If you don't know what an enemy is, folks, uh, don't even play this. Alright, so they... It says they're balanced. Should be able to take them, but I'm just, I just want to finish exploring the the other areas. Make sure there's not a, <laughs> a little treasure chest. Oh, there we go. So he just randomly found a small bag. Oh, and some uh, extra herbs. So that's pretty cool. So I, I don't even really have to fight these goblins. I could just uh, go on, but I mean, come on. <laughs> that's fine! It's combat! Okay, loads up. Oh, a big old block of text. You can read that. It tells you about the pole arms, projectiles, combat grids. <laughs> Those goblins laughing at me. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, so over here we have the speed toggle. Now, they let you double the speed of the combat, which is thank, thank you, Numantian. Thank you for that. Oh, my God, this would be terrible without that speed boost. You can see how slow it is with uh, at normal speed. Tell you the truth, though, even with the 2x is not enough. I, I really wish there was a 3, 3x, maybe even a, a 4x. Okay, so I'm this is for I've got this divine summoner. I didn't really play with them the first time, so I'm kind of experimenting. But it looks like she can summon some extra extra monsters there to fill those vacant slots. That's pretty cool. You can see over there on the right are the, the combat order. And it seems to me that the monsters, they almost always have a higher initiative. They get to go first and they seem to get more attacks than my guys. I guess they must be, they must have a higher speed and, and, and initiative. But that's a big issue. I didn't really pay much attention to it the first time until about halfway through and then I started really bumping up the speed and taking all those uh, perks that would give you better initiative. And that, that really made a big difference. You know, not just in... I mean, being able to attack first, open up and stun everybody, or open up, uh, have your mage uh, freeze everybody right off the start, that's very nice. That can make a big difference. So there we go. First battle done. <laughs> 36k. And then we got a treasure chest here. Get some uh, poor cloth suit, poor cloth boots. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I love a role-playing game that... Yeah, man, you, you don't start off with crap. 
You got like a suit of rags. <laughs> You're thankful for it. Love that. You have to work. Uh, you know, it makes it all the sweeter later on when you really do have nice stuff. You know, sort of where you came from. You can't stand those games that just start you off with all this awesome gear right away. It just kind of takes a lot of the, the fun out of it. It's, it's just not good capitalist gaming. <laughs> okay. So it's getting dark. That's another thing in this game. You have to rest. And you have to keep some uh, light going. You have these torches. It doesn't make that big a deal out in the, in the wild like this. But when you're in a dungeon, it can get totally dark. Can't see anything. You have to have some torches. Another good old uh, throwback to the good old days. Of course, there's a spell your mage can get uh, that will light things up. But the torches are pretty cheap, and that light spell costs a lot of your mana. Or power points, I think they call them in this game. So it doesn't hurt just to grab some torches and some lockpicks. And here's Galvan the Trainer. So he'll tell us a little bit more of the story. Big surprise, uh, things aren't all kosher <laughs> here at the, uh, in this uh, land of Rodinia. There's some uh, weird stuff going on, some tyrants, some bad princes. The religious order has been overturned. It's just a lot of really nasty stuff going on. But we're on a mission from God. I'm not kidding. <laughs> we are on a mission from God. <laughs> okay, Prince of Ningorth. Yeah, I mean... Don't really like him. Didn't like his soldiers. Probably not going to like him very much. Now, the cool thing about these uh, these trainers is one in every village, and that's where you get the the quests, little side quests you can go on, which are again all but mandatory if you want to level up. And then they, uh, you, for a certain amount of gold, you can get extra skill points. And uh, when you level up your party or your characters, you'll have some extra uh, skill points to work with, which is really cool. And it starts off cheap, but every time you get one, it goes up a little bit, so... You really have to put some thought into how you want to invest. Now, quite a bit of uh, stuff to read. So, I guess guys that don't like reading might want to move on to another game. Fortunately, it's not bad reading. As you can see, they're setting up a lot of the, the, the game. The big, bigger story here. The grand narrative, if you will. You got four sons we'll have to deal with, and they have keys, and you have to use the keys to get into the temples, and uh, there's quite of, uh, a lot of stuff we have to do here. So basically, we're trying to uh, restore the religious order, or something along those lines. No big surprise, we'll have to deal with each one of these princes in turn, and then uh, go into the temples. So there's, there's, you're looking at a good, like I said, my other game, I'm up to about 48 hours of gameplay. And I think I might have uh, dealt with three. I think I might be on my third prince. So there's, there's quite a bit of game here. Now you're going to get your money's worth. So there's a little clue. I have to go find this Odred the Hermit. Man, what would fantasy games do without these hermits? <laughs> Got to go out in the woods and find this crazy old guy who knows what you need to do. Works probably works in real life. Maybe that's their problem. Maybe we need to just go out in the woods and find some hermits. Ah, uh, Dobrik's Ring. There's my first side quest. 200 experience, 400 gold coins. <laughs> Nothing like cold hard cash to motivate these pious party members. Yeah, and here's the training option. So it's only 50 gold for the first one, so... Until next time. That's not too bad. Let's uh, explore a little more here. Now, the food vendor is going to be crucial. The last thing you want is to be off somewhere without any food. Because then you can't rest. you got no way to heal. get this huge uh, penalty to your party. I mean, basically, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> uh, and food is expensive, and it, I don't know if it's rotting or if people are just sort of munching on it all the time, but you really go through the food quickly. So you really want to grab the, the biggest bag of Cheetos you can. And uh, it's going to be expensive. You're going to use a lot of your, your money at first just on food. Now you can find some food here and there, but you know you probably want to have at least uh, two or three days worth. Preferably as much as you can afford. And just Yeah, here we go. So if you look around carefully, you'll see a lot of little secrets 
Lots of little treasure chests here and there. Really pays to be alert. There's a lot of secret paths. You know, it might look like a impenetrable, in, impenetrable, how do you say? <laughs> impenetrable, there we go. Uh, wood, wooded area, but they're, you know, if you kind of tease around it with the mouse enough, you'll find a little little secret trail through it. Find some really cool stuff that way. I love a game like this with just lots of secrets. You know, you've got what's what's obvious, but you, there's this whole other layer of the game. I think that's, you know, I like uh, Grimrock for the same reason. You know, it really pays to explore, not just try to rush through everything. Ah, here's old Terry the Innkeeper. Get some uh, rumors and enjoy some ale. The hearty brews of the region. You know, that would have been an awesome Kickstarter uh, reward, right, to get some of the... Some uh, some kind of homebrewed ale themed around the game. That would have been... <laughs> Heck, I would have had to donate at that level no matter what. Okay, let's... Oh, man, look at that. Now, you're not picking that lock. <laughs> you could forget it. You're just going to waste your picks. Uh, these mausoleums, though, there's one in every uh, region, I believe. I'm pretty sure about that. And somewhere else on the map is the key to it. So you just have to explore, find the key, then go in there and... Usually there's some pretty cool treasure. And let's see. Here's this uh, Priestess of Febret. Febre. <laughs> and they're they're really important because they have uh, these blessings they'll put on you. Now I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler here. All of the blessings that she can offer, eventually you'll have those on you permanently if you do the do certain things. I don't want to tell you necessarily what those things are, but it's a really awesome. I mean, you know, once you get your first one, you want to collect them all. Because they make a big difference, and you can save cash. Now, she's going to start charging you more for these blessings the higher level your party gets. And some of the battles are so tough, you just about have to have them. So, yeah, it's pretty nice, and you can just have them on you permanently. May the light of the gods illuminate your path. Oh, isn't that nice? The creepy old guy hanging out in the graveyard. Another nice touch is you don't have to click on these guys to get their little flavor text. They'll just uh, say it automatically when you walk over towards them. You know, it's just it's little things like that that I think uh, really show some polish. I mean, why should I have to click on every damn person just to, to, to see their message? You know, I like that it just automatically pops up. You know, if you can read it, you can read it if you want to. If you've seen it already, you just ignore it and move on. Greetings, stranger. Now this old Drogo the farmer, he's got a little uh, little quest for you. You can go into his farm and gather up all these, uh, uh, what is that, wheat, barley, something like that. And if you get a stack of 20, I think he'll give you 50 gold. And this stuff will grow back pretty quick, so if you do find yourself uh, stuck without any gold, uh, you can come here and do this. <laughs> Yay! Not exactly riveting. And they kind of, I guess, wanted to make it feel like work. It's kind of... tell you something about yourself, I think, when you're in this field. and You know, you get the tin, but you're like, man, but there's like a, there's some more left. <laughs> I've got to, like, click every one of these damn wheats. I just can't help myself. Oh, my... God. Yeah, I'm going to make you guys watch this, too, because uh, <laughs> this is a lot of work harvesting. I got a all new appreciation for, for farming. You know, I, I feel like I am a gardener now. You know, I can I can honestly say I've uh, worked on a farm. <laughs> there we go. Let's get the cash. 50 gold. That's not bad. You know, that quest is only, what, maybe 100 Goodbye. I don't know what would happen to you if you didn't have it. You probably want to have at least 100 gold on you at all times because you might not be able to get back into this village. And that would be bad. So here we go. There's your food. Two days, three days, 90 gold, four days. The longer we are able to make the food last, the more expensive it will be. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that makes that much sense. Basically, it's just a cool, it's just a timer thing. If you go through certain types of regions, you'll use up more food. Especially, uh, it seems like in the, the winter realms, you're really just always munching. Let's see what kind of armor I can afford. 
Now the big limitation with the armor is your guys are pretty puny. They can't really carry that much weight. Now, eventually you can level that up, but just because you can afford that nice uh, plate armor or the scale armor, none of your guy, you know, you might not have any guys that can that can wear it. Uh, at least not without taking this huge penalty for being overburdened. So just uh, get what you can afford. I'm gonna worry more about the armor than the weapons at first. Try to get some decent defense on all your front row guys. But keep in mind, you will frequently have uh, guys in the front row die. <laughs> in which case, uh, the back row will move up. So you want to have some armor on everybody if you can. Don't think that they're going to be perfectly safe in the back. I mean, if nothing else, they'll constantly be get getting hit with those area effect spells. And There's lots of really awful monsters that can attack in a line and hit your back row guys. Yeah, basically you want to be saving the game uh, constantly. Because <laughs> you never know when there's some random encounters just going to wipe you. Okay, so I think I'm pretty good to go here. We'll go out this eastern side and I have to show you this this first dungeon. Man, it's uh, really, really incredible. <laughs> now, I said those guys were troublesome. Basically, it's going to give you these these adjectives. It starts with puny, very easy, easy, balanced, troublesome, challenging, difficult, very difficult, dangerous, and titanic, and I think impossible. <laughs> and there's uh, maybe even some more of those. But basically, anything above uh, troublesome is probably going to kill you. And even sometimes uh, the balanced ones will wipe your party. You know, I have to say they don't they don't do the best job with that. Some of these battles can just get maddeningly difficult, especially when you start to get stunned and paralyzed and poisoned and bleed. You get all these bleed effects on you. I mean, it's, it's one thing. Uh, there are just a lot of random encounters. And it seems like it never got to a point for me where it was just a walkthrough. You really have to focus on, on every battle. So that could be a deal breaker for some, but... Again, you know, you, you feel like you... By the time you've killed so many of these guys, you do feel like you've got some experience. Also, there's a little journal that updates when you fight the same kind of monsters over again, so it's a nice little benefit that way. And you notice I have to shuffle my party around a little bit so they can reach the, the enemies. It's probably best to start off with the, the outside guys and work your way towards the center. Now that treasure chest there is trapped, so I can try to do this I have to click on it when it turns green and my it's difficulty level two and my skill is a big fat zero so it's only gonna be green for a split second oh no <laughs> I didn't make it oh and then on top of that we've got a lock you can see why you have to have so many lock picks you're just constantly breaking these things if you get your skill level up uh, then you don't break as many lock picks but in general though you need to have as Many lockpicks as you can afford, because it always seems like you're running out of them. And there's, you can try to bash a chest open, but it just takes uh, forever. You waste all your food. Troublesome. Huh? <laughs> yeah, save the game. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with these guys. See how troublesome they are. Hey, you want trouble? I got you trouble. Song of courage. It's a great thing the bards can do. Makes you able to hit. Now see that 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 bastard hit Hilda Hilda there. Almost uh, took half her health, and she's got a uh, two points of bleed on her, so she's going to be bleeding out. If I can't kill these guys before she bleeds out, uh, she will die. And you know death. Uh, that's one nice thing. If the characters die, as long as you don't wipe, it's not that big of a deal. You just use some food. Oh look at that, she's out. But you just use up your food and then you can come back. You can go to an inn and rest for a full day and you're <laughs> back up. So don't think about the characters as being dead so much as uh, just, I guess, uh, in a coma. <laughs> yeah, let's get that herald out there. I'm actually kind of liking this divine summoner. That's pretty cool. I'm guessing uh, she'll get a lot more powerful as you can raise her skills and summon more powerful enemies. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by the death here. Okay, so... Hilda is dead. Now what is that? There's a chest. Now there's a uh, 
teleportation portal, dimensional portal, but yeah, I don't have anywhere. You have to have uh, two of them, I guess, to make it work, and we don't haven't explored enough to find another one. So, anyway, that's good to know where that is. Not too far from the village. Now I'll go back in here and find the tavern. Rest up. You could also pay that lady at the temple, but I think it's cheaper just to go to the tavern. Care for an ale? So full day is forty gold coins. I think that ought to do it. And that will take care. There's not, you know, see, this is uh, true to life, too. There's not many problems in life, including death, that a, you know, a good pint of ale and a night in a tavern can't take care of. All right, so we got a little more gold. I might go over here and see if I can gear up just a little bit more good before day, we take on that uh, first dungeon. See you soon. Yeah, I think I'm good with food. Let's see. Oh, there's some. A <laughs> hundred gold just sitting in a barrel. How can I help you? Now, don't you wish you lived in a world where you could just wander around and just pick up like a hundred dollars out of a barrel? <laughs> That'd be so cool. How would you fix the economy? Well, what we need is lots more barrels. So I gotta do something for Hilda here. I mean, she's already died once. <laughs> Her little picture has it there in plate. Yeah, it's gonna be a while before that portrait lives up to the reality. How about a poor cloth magic suit? And a fur shield. <laughs> Here's a shield made out of fur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fur sh I don't even sure how that... I guess it must be some way to toughen up the fur. <laughs> it's just kind of a funny, funny thought. Okay, so let's get the heck out of here and look at that first dungeon. Alright, now here we go. Now if you didn't love this game before, we are... <laughs> it's about to get a whole lot more awesome. That's right. It's time to kill some rats! Cave of the rat! <laughs> oh, oh, God, give me those rats. Man, I love a game that lets you just... I mean, don't give me a bunch of crap. Just let me kill some rats. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Just let me kill some rats. Preferably with an axe. I've been playing a little Dragon Age Inquisition and... Yeah, it's, you know, it's fancy, and everybody just looks fantastic, and you can see the the freckles on people's faces and all that. Where's the... F where mm, are the rats? I don't want to kill these stupid demon-looking things. Just give me a rat. Just give me a rat. How hard is that? Anyway, sorry about my rat rant. It's really... It really bothers me that there's so-called role-playing games out there where they have you killing anything but a rat. Oh, there's a trap. See, they don't just throw the rats. You kind of have to work up to the rats, you know. They're, I see them over there. I see that. Oh, look. There. Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, look, four of them. Oh, Ooh, look at those guys. Oh, I mean, those are good-looking rats, aren't they? All right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, get the... Batan! Bat oh! Oh, that was easy. Oh, wow, these guys are just... They're just, uh... <laughs> wow, that was nothing. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe those were the, uh... Appetizer rats. Yeah, they're, they're just there to kind of whet your appetite. There's probably like a... Giant... Rat Lord King... Demon rat. Uh, is it... Corpse. <laughs> Look, this adventurer died to those rats. God, he didn't deserve. He deserved to die. <laughs> Dude, if, the, if those rats killed, oh God, man. Oh, there's a, a spider. Yeah, rats, spiders. I guess they kind of go go together. Oh, oh no! Look at that. Five poison. So she's gonna start ticking down real quick. Man, it looks like old Hilda is going to be that character for me. You know, you, you always have that character that just... I mean, one of those damn rats is going to one-shot her. He's always dying. Dragging everybody else down. I mean, there's nothing more depressing than you're having a, a little party and then somebody just up and dies. I mean, awful. I'm setting up my... I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you got a pretty nice uh, row of quick slots there. You don't have to keep clicking and clicking. You can just uh, stick them up there, and then you can hit a key on your keyboard instead of uh, using the mouse. 
And by the way, guys, I, I know some of you guys are probably near genius IQ levels, and I was wondering if you might be able to help me out with something. I, I basically want to design, or want to have designed, rather, a, a special type of controller. I basically want to want is a, a beer mug, like a frosty beer mug, but along the handle would be little buttons, right? And I guess it would be Bluetooth enabled or something, so I wouldn't have to put the beer down. I could just hold it, drink it, and then every now and then maybe push a button on it uh, to inter interact with my game that way. Uh, so if you guys could uh, design that for me, I don't claim, uh, I don't care about the patent or anything. <laughs> it's, I just want it. <laughs> so please. <laughs> I think there's a, this is probably one of the big problems of society that could be easily solved. Just a little bit of uh, ingenuity. Ah, oh, look, there's the brass stunning bastard sword. Hey, wouldn't it suck to be a bastard sword? I tried to think about why. Why do they call it that? Was like the sword doesn't know who who his dad was. <laughs> like a so you can use it one-handed or or two-handed. What's so bastardly about that? I. I just don't know. I mean, some of you guys probably know. So please, please uh, share your, your insights. I couldn't even find it on Wikipedia. <laughs> you know it must be esoteric knowledge if it's not on Wikipedia. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a bit here because I know you just want to see some more rat battles. Who can blame you? It's kind of one of the great eternal questions, really, is how many rat battles is too many rat battles? And Apparently the number is, is so large, it's, it's only sort of hypothetical that it even exists. And now you see I'm getting it. Oh! Oh! Ow, okay. <laughs> now these rats ain't playing, man. These these are the real... These are the real rats. They look a little bit larger than the other, other rats, too. So, I mean, somebody even say these were rodents of unusual size. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe they one-shotted my, my main character, though. Yeah, he's going to have a hard time living that down. Okay, let's take a look at the boss of the dungeon, then we'll get out of here. At the end of the cave, you observe with horror a skeletal body in threatening battle armor. Now, if you hover over him like that, you can see his aggro range. It's actually pretty important to know, because there's some areas where the monsters are just so tough, you basically have to just navigate around them. Okay, let's see what this skeleton can do. <laughs> There's Gollum again, already half dead. Ah, it's too bad you you stuck with him as a main character. Okay, so he's down to 59%. Let's keep wailing on him. Gollum there is uh, he's got that nausea. That's probably not helping anything, but oh jeez, Hilda, Gollum, what am I gonna do with you two? Only that barbarian. He's been consistently badass throughout. I'm really impressed with him. Oh, we got him. Victory! When a fighter is burning, he will continue to something. Else. Okay, let's see what. Ah, oh, Gollum leveled up. <laughs> Maybe we can make him slightly less wimpy. Uh, so let's see. Weight capacity, defense. Okay. So each time you level up, you can level up two stats. And then you get a certain amount of skill points that you can distribute among all these different skills down here. And you can see some of them have a high cost. Um, only Gollum has these nature skills. So those wouldn't be a bad thing to pump up. Uh, but also, since I don't have a thief in the party, I might need him to pick locks and disarm traps, too. So it's kind of a tough call with him. I always end up making him sort of a jack-of-all-trades, unfortunately. But uh, eventually he'll get poison on his knife or on his axe, poisonous weapons, which makes him uh, really competitive. But for now, it's kind of eh, iffy. <laughs> Let's see, what should I get? Perception will help you spot traps. That's actually very important. Keep uh, put a point in there every now and then. And then the camouflage, like I said earlier, that's uh, that actually proves very useful as well. I think I'll put a point there. Nope. Oh forgot to improve my abilities. Now the cool thing about these attributes is uh, a lot of them will have uh, a bonus if you hit a certain uh, what's the word for it? Uh, dividend I guess? Or like if you get 15 or 20 every 5 points uh, you get a, another bonus on top of it. Brass Holy Dagger. So there's one type of weapon that none of my characters know how to use. <laughs> it's the one that I keep finding everywhere. 
Ah, magic cauldron. Now, how much would somebody have to dare you before you would just take a swig out of some mysterious cauldron somewhere with a <laughs> oddly colored brew? Uh, I probably just got enough gold out of that chest to pay for the lock picks I broke getting the gold from the chest. <laughs> All right, let's uh, scoot on forward here, and I'll show you some of the uh, my my other party. So here's this other party I started off with. You see, some of the characters are are the same. I've got the mage, a cleric, the bard, a paladin, and a soldier in this party. Yeah, that's worked out pretty well for me. Can't really complain. Except for the, I would like to. I probably would re would have replaced one of them with a thief. Maybe the the. Ah, it's just so hard to decide. <laughs> I kind of like them all. Yeah. I wonder how a thief would perform in the front row is the question. So you can see my mage now. He's got some pretty awesome uh, area of effect spells. So you can set up a whole line of them on fire. And the, my soldier has a really good bleed attack. Let's see if we can stun him. So you can see how that stun works. So I only have to deal with two of them now. Makes this a lot more survivable. And see Gallon, uh, Gallon there has his poison so you can put a damage over time and I, those that the, the fire adds up by the way so that'll continue to do its work um, cleric has regeneration put a song of rage on there and that makes everybody uh, stronger so even though this started off looking like a hopeless situation you can see with the right spells and buffs on your party stun effects and all sorts of uh, little tricks like that you can Get through some pretty tough battles. Let's see, Meteor. Oh, I forgot to mention this. There's also wounding in this game. So if you get wounded or you wound a, a monster, then they'll start missing a lot more and they'll be easier to hit. So you have to kind of watch that. The really hard part of battles is all the uh, damage over time. Like you see my mage there, Mortian here. He's got a 16 bleed on him, so he's losing 16 points per turn. And that's in addition to whatever damage he takes if he gets hit. So you really have to try to wrap these battles up quick before he dies. Or sit there and try to heal him, but you know, you really want to waste your clerics or your paladin's turn just healing him. And there's lots of little quick calls like that you have to make. All that stuff goes away after the battle, except for the wounded. This is a tough soldier here. What is this thing I'm fighting? Weapon Master. This guy must have a lot of health. Nope. So Mortian's got one more turn before he's... Maybe two... There we go. Okay, we're done. What is this? Elixir 3. A oh, nice little elixir. You can quaff those in battle too if you need a little perk. Yeah, so this is pretty far in. You can see I have uh, up to level 26 on these characters. But, you know, the game, uh, I think it's, it's fairly well laid out in that, you know, typically by the time you're starting to get bored... Uh, with your character where we combat you'll get to a, a new skill or a new ability so you have a, something new to play with new spells and so on so it's, it's very nicely laid out like that now these are some, probably my least favorite enemies in the game these these thieves as you can see there they do a lot of damage they steal gold and they'll, they'll steal your items and then they'll run away and you can't get it back and that's not bad enough they got these throwing stars that they'll chuck at you and That'll typically hit two or three people. Yeah, three people at once. And puts a nasty bleed on I mean, look at that. 32 points, 30 points. So these characters are basically just gushing blood. They're going to almost certainly bleed out. It's not going to be able to keep up with the healing. So you can either uh, get rid of the bleed effect, or you can just try to desperately heal, heal them for using uh, your Cure Light Wounds spells. And so it's sometimes it's just impossible to keep them alive. So she's almost dead. I mean, 33 bleed damage, so should I mend the bleeding or just try to heal her? Just try to, uh, I think she's a goner no matter what I do, so I'll just try to <laughs> keep my fighters going just a little bit longer. Oh, there she's gone. And Mortian's next with the 43 <laughs> bleed effect. It'd be nice if he even gets another. Oh, he gets one more turn, so let's get a fireball going. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Now, Gastharos, 
she's in this party she's been my strongest character she does a lot of damage and she's got a lot of health and armor uh, other characters not so much the uh, paladin there just can't, seems like he just never hits and Gollin's pretty cool but he uh, doesn't have a lot of armor so anyway folks uh, let's wrap it up here this is Lords of Shulama from New Mantian Games if you want to buy this game I recommend <laughs> that you get it from goodoldgames.com that way you don't have to worry about DRM and uh, plus You'll be supporting Matt Chat if you buy it with the link that I'll put in the show notes. Hint, hint. It's a $13.99 for the sort of vanilla edition. And then for $20.99, $20.99, you get the deluxe edition, which comes with the soundtrack and some, uh, I think some PDF books, wallpapers, and uh, uh, some DLC, Talisman of Golot DLC. As far as rating it goes, it's it's a little tricky. I'm sort of uh, torn between a four and a five. You know, four out of five drinking horns or five out of five. It's there's parts about there's parts of it that I really like. I do feel like it gets a little repetitive with this. Maybe there's just too many encounters. I'd feel fine going with the five out of five if they had a a speed faster than the two X. <laughs> maybe toned down. Maybe uh, worked out some of the balance issues with some of these uh, damage over time effects, but. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. Put a lot of hours into it. Still not finished with it. So, go check it out. I think you'll will like it. Lords of Shulama. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, if you want to own your very own copy of Lord of Shulama, just go to the show notes and look for those links to the GOG affiliate pages. And I will thank you very much. Uh, as always, I want to thank all of you who have supported and contributed to this show. Could not do it without, the, uh, without you guys. Uh, there's just no way you would have 275 episodes of Match Hat if some of you, uh, really good people, hadn't stepped up to, the, uh, to support the show. Uh, not just monetarily. I mean, I really, really appreciate that, of course. But uh, even people that just uh, tweet about the show, tell people about it on Facebook. Uh, who knows? Maybe even send emails or gasp. Actually communicate orally to someone. Uh, I really appreciate that, guys. This is a totally uh, word-of-mouth advertising and uh, completely fan-supported. So thank you, one and all. All right, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Well, uh, a couple cool items here. Uh, one is a new Kickstarter uh, that has just launched for Shadowrun Hong Kong. I know a lot of you folks are big fans of the Shadowrun games and the uh, video games that just came out. Not what was it Shadowrun uh, Returns? I guess it must have been two, a couple years ago, maybe uh, a little longer. But anyway, the good news is they just rolled this thing out, and they were asking for one hundred thousand dollars, and they've already collected five hundred and thirty-four thousand at the time of this uh, video, which I think that was only one day. So. <laughs> I and mean, that's the kind of Kickstarter results that everybody that everybody wants. But anyway, I went over there and uh, supported that. Uh, Fifteen bucks gets you the digital copy, so it should be really cool. Uh, I like the last one too, so this one looks like it might even be better than that. So uh, heads up. Also, Adam, uh, a longtime uh, fan of the show and uh, personal friend, sent in a link to a game called Serpent in the Staglands. This is a uh, they're calling it an ARPG. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what that meant. I guess maybe adventure role-playing game. But it's an isometric, party-based role-playing game. It's uh, real-time with pause. And I believe uh, it's set... I want to say it's set in Transylvania. <laughs> Seems like I remember reading that. I didn't write it down, though. Uh, anyway, that uh, should be available sometime in the first quarter of this year. But if you go to their website, and I'll put a link to it, you can actually pre-order it. It's uh, 20 bucks to uh, pre-order it. Pre -order it. And I think that also supports the development. Uh, to do that. So I went ahead and did that. It looks like it's going to be well worth uh, the money. All right, what about that ale of the week? Uh, this week I got something really, really, really cool. Uh, this is a Hop Rising uh, Double IPA, a Double India Pale Ale, from the Squatters Craft Beers. These guys are out of Utah, Salt Lake City, and this is a 9% 
uh, beers. <laughs> Very strong. You wouldn't want to drink these, uh, too many of these. Uh, but the nice thing is, and I've noticed this lately, it's a very bothersome trend. A lot of the stronger beers are coming in four packs instead of a six packs. And I always feel kind of uh, strange getting a four pack. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of uh, disturbs me. Uh, so I noticed this was, these guys are still sticking to the six pack, even at 9%. So, I mean, it's worth checking out <laughs> just for that. Um, they got a, quite a bit of text here. Uh, they say it's smoothly dry hopped ale. Um, and that's our master brewer, Joss, Jason Stock, pitching on the front of this can. So that's pretty cool. You guys, uh, I'll show you that. Uh, you can actually see the guy's picture on the can. Uh, that's a lot of fun. You know, a lot of these people that brew beer, they're really cool people. They're, they're kind of like you and me. You know, they're, they're rather nerdy, uh, rather passionate about their, their hobby. And uh, it's just kind of a, if you ever get to talk to them about beer, it's, it's a lot of fun. And when you can go to their brew, brew pubs or uh, even just go to the breweries and talk to them. I've had that opportunity a few times. Always uh, really, really uh, enjoyable. Anyway, uh, let's see. Anything else here? Good for what ails you. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, let's get this uh, son of a gun open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Hop Rising here, the rather excellent drinking horn. Ah. <sighs> Really nice aroma on this. You can definitely smell the, the hops. It's got kind of a sweet and uh, just a really uh, pleasant aroma on this. It smells really good. Uh, let's give it a taste though. Oh, I think I got a lot of the, uh, the, the foam that time. A uh, really nice uh, taste already. Kind of a caramel flavor to it. It's uh, definitely a bit on the sweet side. I was, uh, let me try it again though, try to get some uh, a better taste. You definitely get some, uh, a little bit of bitterness on this, kind of a, a little bit of a cherry-like flavor to it, uh, but it's very sweet. I think the sweet balances out the, uh, the bitterness quite well. Nice, uh, thick, creamy ale. I'll try it one more time here. You can definitely taste the alcohol in this, uh, but that's... Uh, to be expected. Uh, I love the hops. I like the uh, the overall balance of this. It's not too bitter. It's not too sweet. It actually seems to be just about right. It is a bit on the uh, thick side though, so you definitely wouldn't want to uh, try to drink a whole, you know, whole six pack of these, for example. Uh, but if you're looking for something to sip on slowly, maybe for an hour or so, I think this would be a really good choice. And plus, it's kind of fun to sip on a really good ale like this for about an hour or so. <laughs> so I'm going to give this a, a full five out of five drinking horns. If you like the IPAs, you don't mind a little bitterness. You like sort of a, a cherry, chocolatey, coffee kind of flavor to it uh, with a bit more hops uh, than you might get with a normal IPA. Uh, I recommend this. <clears throat> uh, definitely very good stuff. So let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was, uh, as I was looking for quotations, I came across one from one of my favorite science fiction authors, Mr. Robert A. Heinlein. It goes something like this. Yield to temptation. It may not pass your way again. <laughs> See you guys next week. That's a fun game. Not bad. Daryl Richardson. You swear you never played this before. I don't think so. Right. But for all you know, you could have invented pole position. Oh, come on, Hokey. Don't be Will stupid. you stop calling me that? And I'm not kidding. It seems to annoy your mother, too. Of course it does. That's the whole point.